So we derived the position for constant acceleration kinematics using calculus. And now I'm going to show you how to do it just with graphs. Now that really calculus is just graphs. But before I do, there's something I have to get off my chest. I've been teaching in this room for about seven years and I have been staring at these. Hiding in a drawer under this bench are these two puppets. And they've been haunting me for seven years and I do not know why they're here. I don't know what they're for. I'm imagining some sort of harassment seminar, I don't know. But it really bothers me. So if anybody can fill me in on this, I'm just gonna put them back and try to pretend they're not there. Now, here we go. So let's think then about these graphs. So we're gonna do the same problem and actually I'm gonna throw it again because I wanna see acceleration with a constant initial velocity, right? So I'm just gonna do that again, okay? That's the problem we're looking at. So it's the case of the chalk that started at the origin and went down, where down is the positive x direction. And we gave it even an initial velocity, all right? So to do this with graphs, we need to draw the graph. So let's draw the um, position versus time, x, the velocity versus time, v, and the acceleration versus time. So we know it starts uh, with an initial velocity, so I'll give it a little bit of a slope at the beginning and then have it go up like that. We know it starts with some offset from here because it had an initial velocity, and then that velocity continued to increase due to acceleration. And we know it had a constant acceleration because everything near the surface of the Earth has a constant acceleration. And we know we're asking ourselves how fast does it go after it gets to some time t. So we could say to this point t. Ran out of room there. There we go. So we're going to solve this graphically. But there's one thing we got to sort of know, we got to remember. And one thing is we know that if we go this way, we're taking derivatives and slopes. Right, when you have position versus time and you want velocity versus time, what do you do? You take a derivative. Or, if you like ge uh, graphical analysis, you can say the slope. Right? If you want to know the velocity from this thing, you take the slope of this curve and it's equal to the velocity. The slope is increasing. That's why the velocity is increasing. Same thing. Every time you go down, that happens. We could go down from here to here. And again, you take the derivative which is just the slope, right? If you, want, if you have the velocity time graph, you take a derivative to get the acceleration. And here you can see it's a straight line, its slope is constant, acceleration is constant, right? You can go the other way, and this is getting a little more calculus-y, is you can go and say, what is the change in velocity based on this graph? You can go this way. To go that way, you take an integral. An integral is an antiderivative. Going this way is a derivative. Going this way is the integral. Here I'll say the change equals the integral. The change in v equals the integral of the a. Or you can think of it as the area, the famous area under the curve, right? So you learn that in calculus, that's kind of what an integral is. It's an area under a function. So the change in v is the area under the acceleration curve. And the same thing happens here. It's really just math, so it has to be the same. Here also, the change in delta x, the delta x equals the integral of the velocity versus time curve, which is also just the area, okay? So let's see if we can use this to derive the kinematics equation. Sounds crazy, but let's just see what happens. Let's find delta x. All right, but from zero to t, this is the interval we care about. Delta x, basically x final minus x initial, that domain right there equals the area under this curve. So this is a lopsided trapezoid. I don't know my geometry anymore. So this is something, but I know what I can do is break it up into a rectangle here and a triangle there. So I just need the area under those two curves and it will be equal to delta x, right? So let's pick one. Let's do this one first. That one's easy. <coughs> let's see. It's t on this axis. All right. Let's see. That's t. And what is it here? That's vi. Remember it started 
at a height v initial. So the area of that box is vi times t. OK, that's not so bad. And now we need the triangle. What's the area of a triangle? It's 1 half base times height plus 1 half. And what is the base? The base is t, all right, 1 half t. And what is the height? The height is the change in v. The height is delta v. But what is delta v? Oh, delta v, we've got to do this again. The change is the integral. It's the area under the curve. That's delta v. What's that area? A times t. A t. Ah, and delta x is f, x is x final minus x initial. So um, x final, I mean, I'm sorry. So x final, bring the x initial over, x initial plus v i t. And this is plus 1 half a. Oh my god, look at that. It's the kinematics equation the whole time, straight from geometry. Pardon my lack of vector notation. I decided for this one geometrical uh, derivation, we didn't have to use vectors. But you can see it worked because it's the same thing. That's what slopes and that's what integrals really are. Now, you won't always have simple constant curves like this. We still need to do calculus for other kinds of problems. But for these, technically, this is all you need.